This news up to the minute. Earlier this morning, we asked folks in central and southern Florida to give us a call to let us know how things were going there. On the line right now, we have Lisa, Lisa Grunsner of Miami. Hello. Hi, Lisa. What's going on? Oh, my God. It is, it is blowing like crazy. Our trees are, like, flying away. Oh, boy. Hmm. Okay, what else is going on? Be you okay. it's going like crazy. You can kind of okay. uh, define that for us, okay. if you will. Okay. Well, for, well, our lights just went out again over here, so I can't really see much. But the wind just picked up so much, and um, just trees are going down, and lightning, and and tons of rain, and basically the wind is like blowing the trees down. Did you batten down the hatches in your home? Yeah. Cover up the windows. Why yeah, didn't yeah. you go to Why didn't you go to one of the uh, evacuation shelters? Because I'm in Kendall, and we thought we'd be okay over here, but it's like it's really strong over here. And help us out. Where is Kendall in relation to Miami? Kendall is. Um, let's see. I just moved here from Nashville, Tennessee, so this is a wonderful first for me. Like two weeks ago, so here I am. It's like 20 minutes away from the beach. I see. Welcome to Miami, huh? Oh, yeah, this is a great welcome. Great well, welcome. Well, uh, let me ask you, what's the mood down there among people like yourself? I think I know what, what mood you're in right now, but I what know, about I'm your neighbors? I'm shaking my shoes. Um, everybody left the, the, this room to go to the, the bathroom except for me because I'm, I'm in awe. I've never seen anything like this in my life. Well, you may uh, may want to heed their advice and, and take cover. Lisa Grunsner calling us from Kexley, Kendall, Florida, just outside of Miami. Thanks for calling us, and good luck to you, ma'am. Okay, thanks. Valerie Preston is in Miami, and she joins us now. Valerie, are you there? I'm here. How are you doing? What uh, Describe the, the scene for us. You know that I have never in my life been afraid of anything. I've lived in Florida most of my life, and I'm petrified at this moment. Well, that's probably smart. Tell us what's going on. Well, out in my front yard at the moment, the tree that I told you about earlier, the big black olive tree is completely uprooted now the ground just lay flat in my ground right now how's your house holding together uh, well the the thing on my roof you know the turbine thing that lets all the heat out of the attic mm -hmm. it flew off the trees in my backyard the branches are going down to the ground my glass sliding doors in my kitchen are vibrating and wind is coming through there like crazy now have you warded up the windows almost everything except for the back of my house and you and your family are inside the house. Uh, what part of the house are you in? Are you holding up in any particular room? At the moment, uh, my daughter and I are in the living room, and my son's in his bedroom, but things are getting scary. I mean, pretty scary. All right. Well, you take care, and thanks for talking with Thank us. Thank you very much. Jane Kapler is in Fort Myers, Florida. Good morning, Jane. Hi, Jane, you there? Yes, I am. I'm in Fort Myers. We're parallel with West Palm Beach on the um, Gulf Coast. Tell us what's going on. Well, we're getting ready for it. We're supposed to be get the northeast section of it, which includes the tornadoes. You've been so, through this before? Yes, I have. I'm a native Floridian, born on the east coast, and went through about 12 or 15 of them over there. Hmm. And so, I highly respect them. <laughs> how, does this, uh, how does this fare compared to those that you've been through before? Um, I remember when I was very young, uh, we were flooded. And I remember oak trees turned completely upside down in their original hole. So, you know, I'm more feared, um, afraid of the trees being, you know, coming on the roof and things like that. But I have dogs, and you're not allowed to take dogs to a shelter, and I refuse to leave my dogs. Mm -hmm. I live in rural Lee County, and I'm more concerned about the aftermath because we do have a lot of snakes in this area, and they do come out with a, you know, flood. Interesting point that she brings up. Thanks for calling, man. Interesting okay, great. Hey, good luck to you. Interesting point she brings up. One of the folks of the uh, survivors of Hurricane Hugo want to pass on to the people down in South Florida is things you need to watch out for. Looters and snakes. Ugh. Snakes very high on the list. We want to go to Chris Borium in Cocoa Beach. Hello, Chris. Yes. Tell us what's going on. Well, right now we're not getting a lot of the stuff that they're getting down south, but uh, we are getting very large wind gusts at the time. Uh, we were getting them about 20, 30 miles an hour before, but the gusts seem to be getting up to about 50, 60 miles an hour now. Uh, I was walking down on the beach before to see what was going on, and the tide, the tidal seems to have gone up to just about where the dunes are, and things are just going crazy around here. We're getting rain for like five minutes at a time, and the clouds are passing over, and then it's like clear all of a sudden. Huh. Chris, uh, they'll tell us, what types of things did you do to prepare for the onslaught of Hurricane Andrew? Well, when it first started out, it was heading right at us, so we were, like, all getting ready. Um, we got the windows all taped up and everything like that, just 
we were ready to take off at a moment's notice. Uh, they didn't know what direction it was heading, and they kept putting us on standby. We'll tell you if we're going to evacuate, and that's all we heard. And then all of a sudden, it headed straight west, and things just sort of like got calm around here. It's a uh, 5:12 uh, a.m. on Monday morning, and folks across the country now are, are, are watching this. If you will, just kind of tell us what's it like to sit in your home, knowing that this incredible weather is on the horizon. It's terrifying. Um, I'm from New Jersey, and I've been on the outskirts of a couple of them. Gloria, which passed up there about four years ago, but to have one that actually had an opportunity to hit us head on, it was real scary. That's all that anyone was talking about. I can imagine. Chris Borium, thanks for calling us this morning, sir. Okay, thank you. Bud Benedict is in Fort Myers, and he's on the phone right now. Bud, are you there? Yes. Tell us uh, what's happening up in your neck of the woods. Well, I guess fortunately we don't have as much uh, excitement to report as Miami does right now, but uh, we're starting to uh, get a little bit of the rain, and uh, the wind's starting to pick up. I think right now we're kind of in the calm before the storm. Um, now, you made uh, preparations for the storm to your home? Uh, didn't do too much to my home, but uh, I'm in the aviation business, and uh, we had quite a bit to do there, uh, securing all the aircraft and hangars, and uh, many people, private uh, aircraft owners, flew the planes out, and uh, as well as, uh, of course, all the uh, commercial airlines and freight carriers. All right, by Benedict, thanks for joining us. Take care. Okay, bye. We talked about the evacuations earlier, and we just want to point out again that some people have called us up and said that they cannot find a hotel room anywhere in Orlando, which we've pointed out several times throughout the course of the morning, which has the largest cluster of hotel rooms uh, in the country. All the not hotel anymore. rooms are booked. Yeah, <laughs> not anymore. And one person called us up and told us he can look outside of his window, and some of his residents and neighbors in Orlando are offering rooms in their house for 100 bucks. So uh, quite a business going on there in Florida and quite a morning to tell you about. We'll be back after a break. This is CBS News. Up to the minute. Stay with us.